All the recipients of the degree of Master of Technology, please rise. By virtue of authority vested in me as the Chairman of the Senate of Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, I do hereby admit each one of you to the degree of Master of Technology in your own discipline and charge you to prove worthy of the same throughout your life. All degree recipients, please be seated. Let the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy be presented. Sir, I present the candidates who, having satisfied the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, are considered worthy of receiving the same. I recommend that they be admitted to the said degree. Manish Kumar. Palakolu Veera Bhadraya. Shah Kruba Rajendra. J. Ram Prabhakar. Vyas Tidhi Pandri. Harsha Agnihotri. Payal Chattavadhe Mukherjee. Pooja Susan Thomas. Anjali Rao Jessel. Adi A. Gaurav Kumar Tomar. Arko Roy. Upendra Kumar Singh Kushwaha. Apoor Chaitanya. Tanmay Chattapati. Sir, some of the candidates are not present here today and request that they may be admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in absentia. Each having satisfied the requirements for the said degree is considered worthy of it. 
I recommend that each of them be admitted to the said degree in absentia. Swapnil Vilas Rao, Hariharan P, Torad Alpana Angush, Sudipta Das, Satya Shivanaresh M, Dilip Kumar Dandi, Naveen Chandra, Mithun M. All the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, please rise. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chairman of the Senate of Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, I do hereby admit each one of you to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and charge you to prove worthy of the same throughout your life. All degree recipients, please be seated. The records of the degree recipients will now be presented to the Chairman, Board of Governors, for his signature. Let the candidates for various medals and awards be presented to the chief guests. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the President's Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among all B.Tech students of the graduating batch, Patil Radhika Pramod, Mechanical Engineering. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the President's Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among all MTEC students of the graduating batch, Nandida JS, Civil Engineering. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the President's Gold Medal for securing the highest CPI among all MSc and MA students of the graduating batch, Sini Susan Vargi, Society and Culture. Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Institute Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among the B.Tech students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Nishit Jayadeep Shetty, Chemical Engineering. Jatindeep Singh, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Patil Radhika Pramod, Mechanical Engineering. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the Institute Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among the MA students of the graduating batch, Sini Susan Varghis, MA Society and Culture.
Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Institute Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among the MSc students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Ravi Srivastava, Chemistry. Devu Maheshan, Cognitive Science. <laughs> Nidesh Kumar, Mathematics. Akash Kumar Mishra, Physics. <laughs> Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Institute Gold Medal for securing the highest CPA among the M.Tech students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Vandana Rajput, Chemical Engineering. <laughs> Nandita JS, Civil Engineering. Puchalapalli Samba Shivai, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Sarkar Aditya Anjan, Material Science and Engineering. Mohit Gar, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Institute Silver Medal for securing the second highest CPA among the B.Tech students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Hema Chaudhary, Chemical Engineering. <laughs> Salecha Kushal, Dilip Kumar, Electrical Engineering. Ranshul Saini, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Institute Silver Medal for securing the second highest CPA among the M.Tech students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Sunny Verma, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Abhiti Goyal, Mechanical Engineering.
Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the Director's Gold Medal for the outstanding overall performance among all B.Tech students of the graduating batch, Yash Pradap Singh, Mechanical Engineering. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the Director's Gold Medal for the outstanding overall performance among all MSc and MA students of the graduating batch, B. Ratna Bharati, Society and Culture. Sir, I present the candidate who has been declared winner of the Director's Gold Medal for the outstanding overall performance among all PhD students of the graduating batch, Payal Chattopadhyay Mukherjee, Humanities and Social Science. Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of the Director's Silver Medal for the outstanding overall performance among B.Tech students of the graduating batch in their respective disciplines. Palak Satani, Chemical Engineering. Salecha Kushal Dilip Kumar, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Pranshul Saini, Mechanical Engineering. Sir, I present the candidates who have been declared winners of various awards. Award for Outstanding Innovation, Chitran Shukumar, Electrical Engineering. Award for Outstanding Social Service, Salecha Kushel Dilip Kumar, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Award for Integrity and Exemplary Human Qualities. Ajanathkar Chinmay Kishore, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Award for Outstanding Research in B.Tech, Maliradi Sri Regu, Electrical Engineering. Award for Outstanding Research in M.Tech, Jodi Maheshwari, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Award for Outstanding Research in Ph.D., Torat Alpana Ankush, Chemical Engineering. Award for Outstanding Research in MSc and MA, Nupur Joshi Nitin, Society and Culture. <laughs> 
अवार्ड फॉर आउटस्टैंडिंग परफॉर्मेंस इन स्पोर्ट्स अनिमेश सिंह कुमावत इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग Pioneer Batch Award for Outstanding Leadership, Vishwendra Singh, Mechanical Engineering. Award for outstanding performance in aquatics, Animesh Singh Kumawat, Electrical Engineering. Award for best performance in core courses in engineering graphics, manufacturing and workshop practice, Nirmal J. Prasad Nair, Mechanical Engineering. Award for best performance in core courses in mathematics, Jatindeep Singh, Electrical Engineering. Award for best performance in core courses in physics, chemistry and life science, Salecha Kushel Dilip Kumar, Electrical Engineering. Award for best performance in core courses in humanities and social sciences, Patil Dadiga Pramod, Mechanical Engineering. Award for the best per overall performance in humanities and social sciences subjects, Yash Pradap Singh, Mechanical Engineering. The winner of President's Gold Medal, Patil Radhika Pramod, will now administer oath to all degree recipients. All degree recipients, please rise. I, Radhika Patil, a graduate of Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar, Hereby pledge that I shall always endeavor to be scrupulously honest in the discharge of my duties. I shall utilize my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my abilities for the service of humanity and for the glory of my nation and the Institute. In all, circumstances, in all circumstances, I shall uphold the dignity of the individual, the of the individual and, the and the ethics and integrity of my profession.
all degree recipients, please be seated. Distinguished Chief Guest, Shri Senapati Chris Gopal Krishnan, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Academic Senate, faculty and staff members of the Institute, invited dignitaries and guests, graduate students and their families, members of the press and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It is my proud privilege to extend a warm and hearty welcome to each one of you on this auspicious occasion of the fifth convocation of Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. I'm particularly delighted to welcome Sri Chris Gopal Krishnan, one of the seven co-founders of Infosys, who also served as managing director during 2007 to 2011, and as vice chairman of Infosys during 2011-2014. Recognized as a global business and thought leader, he was voted the top CEO in the Institutional Investors Inaugural Ranking of Asia's top executives. He was the president of the Confederation of Indian Industries during 2013-14 and served as one of the co-chairs of the World Economic Forum in Davos in January 2014. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan by the Government of India in 2011 for his contributions to trade and industry. We indeed feel honored, sir, by your very gracious presence in the midst of us this morning. At this convocation, we just awarded 114 BTEC, 30 MSc, 79 MTech, and 23 PhD degrees, in addition to four postgraduate diplomas of the IIT. Also, we awarded the MA degree in Society and Culture to the first batch of 12 students. My heartiest congratulations to all the degree recipients and medal winners. The academic year 2015-16 has been amongst the most momentous in the eight-year history of this institute, and I consider it my privilege to briefly review the activities of this year. We shifted into our permanent campus, starting with hostels and classes that moved into college in July 2015. Most laboratories, faculty offices, and residences were relocated to the new campus by March 2016. It is a truly remarkable achievement for the Institute to move into its new campus in less than three years of awarding the construction contracts. Last year, around this time, most of the supporting infrastructure within the Palaj campus was awaiting commissioning. Our students exhibited extraordinary leadership in helping stabilize the brand new campus. The batch graduating today has been a pioneer in this respect, and we are extremely proud of each one of them. IIT Gandhinagar's Palaj campus is the first in the country to receive a five-star green rating for integrated habitat assessment for large developments. <laughs> the rating system evaluates the environmental performance of large developments like educational campuses, townships, etc. The institute started several new academic programs this academic year, BTEC in Computer Science and Engineering, BTEC, MTEC dual degree programs, dual major in BTEC programs, MTEC and PG DIIT in biological engineering, MTEC and PG DIIT in earth system sciences. The institute was ranked eighth in the country by the national institutional ranking framework. Though our overall ranking is eight, our ranking is fourth in teaching, learning and resources and fifth in outreach and inclusivity. The institute received several other recognitions as well during the year. It was awarded University of the Year at the FIKI Higher Education Excellence Award 2015 in the category of Institutes in, Excell in Existence for Less Than 10 Years. The staff residences, <laughs> the staff residences and the student hostels in the new college campus bagged the first prize at the Hudco Design Awards 2015 in the category of cost-effective rural urban housing, including disaster-resistant housing. <laughs> two, two of our innovative activities, P 
peer assisted learning program and the foundation program are now receiving national recognition and are being adopted by a number of other institutes and universities in the country iit gandhinagar is a global partner in the landmark scientific discovery of gravitational waves arising from colliding black holes a research group at iit gandhinagar led by dr anand sen gupta has been a part of this discovery our faculty members are now attracting substantial sponsored research projects the institute was recently awarded a project on fire safety under uchchatar avishkar yojana with a funding of about 4 crore rupees a substantial part of it is coming from a private company by the name vimal fire controls private limited mumbai <laughs> another major milestone of the year is the approval from government of india to fund a research park at iit gandhinagar and we sarged as a highly productive physical space the park aims to foster powerful interplay between the industry and the academia and thereby push the boundaries of innovation and research our innovation and entrepreneurship center a not for profit company has received significant funding from the department of science and technology government of india it is envisaged as a service arm of the institute to support incubation ip management and commercialization currently four startup companies are being incubated in the center this year we forged a strong partnership with duke university supported through usaid under an agreement with the ministry of human resource development government of india and assisted by rti international in 2016 a 15 member delegation from duke rti usaid spent four days at the institute and in june 2016 a six member delegation from iit gandhinagar followed up with a five day visit to rti and duke a number of our students and faculty have also visited duke university during the year as a result of this partnership our international collaborations continue to grow this year several iit gandhinagar students credited summer courses at the parson school of design new york under a mou that we have forged with the new school the fourth edition of india ki khoj held in 2015 was joined by a team of three students from japan advanced institute of science and technology along with 12 students from caltech and 16 students from iit gandhinagar on november 30th 2015 the mhrd scheme gyan global initiative of academic networks was launched from iit gandhinagar by the then union minister of human resource development shrimati smriti irani and the institute offered the first gyan course in the country titled 3d digitization for cultural heritage so far iit gandhinagar has conducted four gyan courses and five more are scheduled during this calendar year of the students graduating today 53 btech 10 mtech 6 ma msc and 6 phd students have received international experience through summer internships and participation in international conferences thanks to the generous support of our well wishers and friends i would like to make a special mention of the nielsen company for providing significant funds to support international experience for our undergraduates in fact 45% of the btech students graduating today have had one or more international opportunities thanks to such liberal funding <laughs> our r&d infrastructure is constantly improving and after moving into the permanent campus it is expected to accelerate further the institute management system is making good progress and already being used for student registrations recruitments reimbursements and several other administrative functions the number of scholarly publications and patents from iit gandhinagar is growing at a healthy rate the summer research internship program for our own students and those from other institutions is now fairly well institutionalized this summer almost 100 students from outside iit gandhinagar participated in this program and conducted research at the institute since its inception iit gandhinagar has believed that the future of an institution depends on the quality of its faculty and we continue to recruit some of the most outstanding faculty members as of today the institute has 
82 career faculty members, of which more than a dozen have received prestigious national fellowships, such as Inspire, Ramanujam, and Ramalinga Swami. Every year, the institute recognizes outstanding performance of its faculty and staff. This year, the faculty awards were received by Dr. Kabir Jasuja for excellence in teaching. <laughs> Dr. Vimal Mishra for excellence in research. <laughs> Dr. Pratyush Dyal for excellence in institution building. <laughs> and Professor Amit Prashant for excellence in outreach. The Staff Excellence Awards went to Ms. Jasbir Kaur Thadani, <laughs> Mr. Harish Singh, Ms. Panna Chaudhary, Mr. Darshan Patel, Mr. Jignesh Patel, Mr. Dinesh B. Desai, and Mr. Nayan Vaghela. IIT Gandhinagar's agenda of excellence critically depends on its ability to raise philanthropic funds, and we have made good progress towards this. Till date, the institute has received more than 20 crore rupees from its well-wishers, and additional 20 crore rupees has been pledged. Even more importantly, many of our young alumni have now started to make regular monthly donations of modest amounts. I'm very pleased to share the delightful news that we shall soon be awarding the first set of scholarships to our current students that will be entirely funded by our own alumni. <laughs> our students continue to delight us with their sense of maturity, responsibility, and enthusiastic participation in numerous activities. Their exemplary role during the shifting of the campus is one such example. The way they balance their academic work with extracurricular activities is another such example. They continue to organize with great success a number of social, cultural, and sporting events. These include the eighth edition of the Inter-College Festival, Blithkron, the sixth edition of the annual technical summit, Amalthia, the sixth edition of the intra-college all-night sports event, Halla Bowl, the fifth edition of the intra-cultural college cultural extravaganza Jashn, and the second edition of the intra-college technological festival Ignite. Amalthia continues to generate a surplus year after year, and its savings over the years are now adequate for the institute to set up an Amalthia scholarship on merit means basis. Mr. Gaurav Sharma became our first BTEC student to complete graduation in seven semesters. And <laughs> and has just been awarded a BTEC degree in mechanical engineering with a minor in management. <laughs> in sports, Ms. Nisha Rawat won the gold medal at the 50-meter breaststroke in the 31st Inter-IIT Aquatics Meet held at IIT Madras. Our students continue to win a number of medals in several sports events in Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. IIT Gandhinagar takes tremendous pride in its innovative curricula and the extraordinary opportunities that we provide to our student body for their holistic development. Thus, placement data shows that this pride is not misplaced. A large number of our students choose to pursue higher studies or entrepreneurship. A substantial number of our students graduating today have secured admissions in top universities such as Stanford, Duke, Toronto, Urbana, and Imperial College. Five of them have chosen to pursue their PhD at IIT Gandhinagar, and we take this as an endorsement of our research environment. The, 
The institute offers a deferred placement policy which allows students to defer their placements by up to two years to pursue alternate career paths. And the number of students availing it rose to 21 this year as compared to nine last year. Again, a substantial increase in the number of students seeking alternate career paths is an indicator of the self-confidence of our students. During the year, the Institute organized numerous continuing education activities, conferences, in addition, in association with the Indian National Academy of Engineering and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, we hosted the first Indo-Chinese Young Engineers Leaders Conclave in October 2015. Our Center of Cognitive Science hosted its third international conference on cognition, brain, and computation in December 2015. The conference brought together an interdisciplinary dialogue between neuroscience and computational approaches in the study of cognition. It is important for us to make a difference to our immediate neighborhood, nurture and empower entrepreneurship ventures, NEVE, our community outreach program, took up several major activities, an entrepreneurship development workshop at Khambat, Gujarat, a two-month-long training in stitching for women from Palaj village, several awareness programs on entrepreneurship for people from neighboring villages of Palaj, Basan, and Lavarpur, and a nine-week vocational skills training program for young men from nearby village Palaj in trades such as carpentry, welding, and wiring. Some of our other uh, outreach activities included a workshop for science teachers sponsored by Sarv Shiksha Abhiyan, Sanjeevni, a health mela and medical camp for more than 1,400 people from neighboring villages sponsored by Desai Foundation, Science Day celebrations in which 1,200 school children participated, and a number of events with the Foundation for Excellence to support students from low-income families studying in engineering across the country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, building a new university is a great privilege and an enormous responsibility. The actions of the initial years have a disproportionate income, a disproportionate impact on the institute in the decades ahead. Very few get an opportunity to contribute to building a new university. And all of us associated with IIT Gandhinagar are mindful of the singular privilege accorded to us. We must do everything within our means to prove ourselves worthy of the trust that our country and our society has placed in us by investing enormous resources on this institute. IIT Gandhinagar has made exceptional strides over the past eight years. Visitors to the campus frequently comment about its vibrancy, academic ethos and culture, the energy of its faculty, staff, and students, and innovations in curriculum and uh, governance. None of this would be possible without the hard work and dedication of our entire faculty, staff, and students, and the deep faith and confidence of our well-wishers. The Institute has been very fortunate to have extremely supportive Board of Governors and the state and the central governments. We are grateful, of course, for the generosity of the Vishwakarma Government Engineering College Chankhira for having hosted us during the first eight years of this Institute's life. My dear graduating students, I extend my heartiest congratulations to all the students graduating today, as well as to all those who won medals and awards. Many of you joined this institute with a regret that you could not make it to an old IIT. But you soon began to appreciate the extraordinary opportunities at this new IIT. And And you started to feel fortunate to have joined IIT Gandhinagar. In fact, during the farewell speeches at Udan this year, one of your classmates mentioned he was glad he answered a few questions wrong in the JE exam and ended up at IIT Gandhinagar instead of at one of the older IITs. I have been a great admirer of your maturity and your leadership. It amazes me to see how responsible our students have been in taking care of not just their own needs, 
but also those of the entire IIT Gandhinagar student body. How easy it is to communicate with our students and seek their participation in solving a problem. You have been pioneers. You moved into the Palaj campus when we had so many teething troubles in the new campus, in the hostels, in the classrooms. Internet was a challenge, and the institute operated from two locations. It could have exasperated any other group of students, but not you. The student leadership here was a part of the solution, fully partnering with us in addressing those difficulties. I have often said that all of us are here to build a university of global stature at Palaj in Gandhinagar, and you have made huge contributions to the enormous progress that we have made thus far. But we have a long journey ahead in fully fulfilling our vision of building the kind of university that India aspires to have. And who is better placed than you to take this mission forward? As alumni, you are the largest stakeholders in this university, since you will record your alma mater in your resumes forever. I call upon each one of you to remain connected with the institute and to contribute to the institute's mission in whatever manner you can. I urge each one of you to send a small sum of money every year as a gift for future generations of students. Such symbolic or substantial gestures will not only help IIT Gandhinagar reach greater heights, but will also give you pride in the institute. I hope that the great qualities that I see in you will enable you to lead a fulfilling life, to tackle the challenges that may come your way, and to make a positive impact on the environment around you. My friends, life throws up many turns and twists, and everyone must live through the good and the not so good times. Just as it is important to take the right decisions, it is also important to learn to live with your decisions and make a success of what you have. I wish you the courage and the wisdom to take the right decisions and to ensure successful outcomes of your decisions. My best wishes, may God bless you, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind. Uh, congratulations again to all the de degree recipients. And I have the honor of uh, introducing our chief guest for fifth convocation of our institute, um, Mr. Senapati Chris Gopal Krishnan who served as the Vice Chairman of Infosys from 2011 to 2014, and the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Infosys from 2007 to 2011. Chris is one of the co-founders of the Infosys. Recognized as a global business and technology thought leader, he was voted the top CEO, IT service category, in Institutional Investors Inaugural Ranking, of Asia's top executives and selected as one of the winners of the second Asian Corporate Director Recognition Awards by Corporate Governance Asia in 2011. He also was selected to Thinkers 50, an elite list of global business thinkers in 2009. He was elected president of India's Apex Industry Chamber Confederation of Indian Industry CII for 2013 to 14, and served as one of the co-chairs of the World Economic Forum in Davos in January 2014. In January 2011, the government of India awarded Mr. Gopal Krishnan the Padma Bhushan, the country's third highest civilian honor. Mr. Gopal Krishnan serves on the Board of Governors of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, is the Chairman of the Board of Governors of IIIT, Bangalore, and is on the Board of Trustees of Chennai Mathematical Institute. Mr. Gopal Krishnan holds a Master's degree in Physics and Computer Science from the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. So we are all excited to listen to his address, I welcome Mr. Gopal Krishnan on this stage.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sudhir Jain, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Senate, faculty, staff members, invited dignitaries and guests, graduating students and their families, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank Professor Sudhir Jain for giving me this opportunity to participate in this year's convocation. It is an honor and privilege for me to be part of this joyous occasion. I want to start off by congratulating all the graduating students, all the award winners, and their families. I'm sure that you're looking forward to getting out of this institute and into the real world and make your mark. I'm also sure that there's a tinge of sorrow at leaving the institute and the friends you have made over the last few years. I can tell you that I am in touch with my batchmates from school all the way to IIT. Actually, it becomes easier today to stay connected. As they say, there's an app for that also. IIT Gandhinagar is one of the few newer IITs, probably I should say relatively new. And um, Professor Sudhir Jain already talked about um, your experience in the last one year as you moved to this campus. I think this has given you a very unique experience of seeing an institute being built, uh, helping set its culture, helping set the way this institute will operate in the future. And this is actually a very unique experience. In some sense, this is like a startup experience that you have had. And I hope that you cherish this forever. This is the fifth convocation. But you share the heritage and brand of all IITs. And hence, the expectations from the graduating students are very high. You are part of the IIT legend now, legend of successful leaders in all walks of life. IITians have made their mark in business, teaching and academics, research, politics, and government, lawyers and civil servants. Bill Gates, speaking at the fifth anniversary celebrations of IITs in the US in 2003, said of IIT, as an incredible institution that has really changed the world and has the potential to do even more in the years ahead than it has already done. IIT's contribution to India and to the world are not disputed, but this needs to be sustained. So you are actually special, only 1% of students applying to IITs get admission. It is estimated that IITs have graduated over the years about 350 students. This is over the last 60 years. This is less than 0.1% of today's working population of Indians. So you are a rare and unique set. This is why you have to make sure that the tradition of IITians contributing significantly to India and world, to business and society, to research, innovation, and entrepreneurship continues or even increases. The education you had here at IIT Gandhinagar prepares you well for facing any challenge in life. This is part of the explicit knowledge that was shared and that you learned. The certificates that you got today are proofs of, the nat of that knowledge. I want to talk about some topics that you may have imbibed but may not be explicit. Learning happens actually when you make learning an explicit activity. And that's why I want to highlight these as you embark on the next phase of your life. This is also based on my own learnings over the last 40 years. 
The next phase of life is a phase where you contribute back to society, you earn a living, a phase of raising a family, a phase of leadership of men and women, and hence it's important that you look at this. First and foremost, your education is not over. In fact, it should never end. You have to continue to learn for the rest of your life. You will move to a new environment and you need to learn about this new environment in order to contribute to that. You will learn about your new responsibilities. You learn things that are necessary for you to do your work excellently. You know, in, in computer science, for example, a lot of the work that you do is about maintenance and testing, etc. And I'm sure if I look back at my uh, curriculum, there's very little about maintenance or testing of software. So you have to continue to learn. In fact, what is the main difference between software that you write while studying and in your job? In college, the software you write is typically used by you or your team. The software you write in your job may never be used by you, but will be used by others, sometimes the whole world. Significant difference. I can tell you that even today I spent at least an hour reading on interests that I have. I need to do this to keep with the changes that are happening in the field, in areas that interest me. As it is said, change is the only constant, and you better keep up with this change. Second, you need to understand the principles that govern our lives. An example of a principle is uh, from physics, gravity. All objects feel the effect of gravity. We feel this as weight. Similarly, we control our behaviors. Principles control the outcomes. An example is what we eat. If we eat healthy food and exercise regularly, we stay healthy. If we save little money and invest this systematically, over time this becomes huge savings. If you learn something new every day, over time you become smarter. If you have big dreams and work consistently towards these, you will succeed in life. These are simple principles of life and you need to actually imbibe this. Why am I saying this? At Infosys, we set the vision for Infosys to be a globally respected corporation. Every action we took every day was towards achieving this vision. When we write code, it is with the objective of earning respect for the beautiful code that we wrote. When we work with clients, it is to delight them so that we earn their respect. We gave superior financial returns to our investors and earned their respect. The principle we had was very simple. In everything we do, we must earn respect. Third, we all live by our values. Values govern our behavior in day-to-day -day interactions, especially when there are no rules. For example, do you strive for excellence in everything you do? It means that striving for excellence is a core value for you. I request you to define a set of values that you will live by. Over time, others will recognize you by your values. Again, if I look at Infosys, we codified our values with the acronym C-LIFE. C stands for customer delight. It means that we will deliver more value than expected from us, thus delighting our customers. L stands for leadership by example. Probably the best and the most difficult of leadership values. Gandhiji practiced this form of leadership. In fact, he said, my life is my message. This means that there is only one set of rules for everyone in an organization from top to bottom. I stands for integrity, honesty, transparency, living by principles. F stands for fairness to everyone in all transactions, whether one wins or loses. And E stands for excellence. This becomes the way you work. Fourth, cultivate a love for science and technology. Progress improves our lives and makes our life better. 
Science and technology can and should be used to improve the lives of people and hence to drive progress. We are living in an exponential age of exponential technologies. You all know Moore's law, which states that the speed of microprocessor chip doubles every 18 months. In the last 40 years since the introduction of transistor, the number of transistors in an integrated circuit has grown 100 billion fold. And this is why it's called an age of exponential technologies. These microprocessors are inside our smartphones, our computers, and of course, more and more in everything that we use, there is a processor. And hence, as the speed doubles every 18 months, everything that we use actually is also going to improve exponentially. And pretty soon, we'll be driven by driverless cars, 3D printing, where we can feed in the design of the product is changing manufacturing. We have decoded the code of life, the DNA, and we are now proposing to edit the DNA code to modify life and even create new life. We are dependent on our mobile phones. Sometimes I wonder how I used to live without these devices. And many of you are young enough to know or remember the first day your father or mother got your, their first mobile phone. And smartphones have become an all-in-one personal companion. Our lives today depend around these devices. Science and technology are playing such important roles in our daily life that we have to be tech savvy and adept at using tools and technology. And uh, you may have to buy every phone, a phone, a new phone every six months or so. How can you be productive without the latest? My life has been deeply impacted by technology. I was at the right place at the right time. I was introduced to computers while studying at IIT Madras. The year was 1977. Uh, just four years before that, IIT Madras got the second largest mainframe computer in Asia. And I got, learn, I got to learn programming on that computer. I got into the computer industry just as the personal computer was introduced. Apple introduced the first home computer, Apple II, in 1977. IBM introduced the personal computer in 1981 when Infosys was founded. What is the technology wave that you will ride on? Actually, there seem to be many at this point. We are seeing explosive growth in data and information. New tools and technologies, including artificial intelligence and machine learning, are being used to make sense from this explosive growth in data. In the area of life sciences, medicine is moving to predictive, preventive, personalized, and participative medicine again using technology. In transportation, we are seeing the changes brought about by autonomous vehicles. This is indeed actually a great time to graduate with so many simultaneous waves to choose from, to ride on. Even more powerful than technology are models that we use to understand and control businesses, control systems. Infosys and the IT services industry use the global delivery model, that's remote delivery of services, to reduce cost of software development and services in general. This created the $130 billion software services industry that today employs more than 4 million people. Retail sales is assumed to be a Poisson process and follows the Poisson distribution. Microchips follow the Moose law for product improvement. So you need to understand the power of models and develop new models for systems around you and in business. Fifth is entrepreneurship. To me, entrepreneurship is more than starting a new business. It is an attitude towards life. Entrepreneurs thrive on challenges. They find solutions to these challenges, and some, of course, create successful businesses around these solutions. They are problem solvers. They're eternal optimists. You want such people in your team, as friends, and in your businesses. They're not afraid of failures. They see failures as learning opportunities and keep trying to do better till the problem is solved. In fact, as I said, you are all now today entrepreneurs because you had that experience of moving into this campus and solving problems 
helping each other. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Sixth is the power of transparency. With social networks, individuals have tremendous capabilities, especially in communication, convening power, and collaboration abilities. If they feel happy and satisfied, they express these through their social network channels. Equally, if they are unhappy or hurt or dissatisfied, they express these again through these channels. They connect with others who have similar issues, and this amplifies their message, reach a larger and wider audience. This shifts the balance of power towards individuals and consumers. It is better to assume that whatever you say or do will get visibility almost instantaneously. And if you're a business leader, you have to assume that what you do, even privately, will make headlines. And we are seeing many, many instances of this, not just in business, even in politics. That is why I say that there are no secrets. Be transparent in your dealings. Seventh is giving back. We have all, we have been all, be luck, we have all been lucky to be where we are and to get the education we've received. The IIT brand is going to open doors and help you with jobs in the future. I believe that there is a responsibility in each one of us to give back. It can be an hour of time volunteered in teaching in a school or deciding to forego a meal and donating that money or eliminating the use of plastics and help the environment. Every one of these count, not just money. I want you to develop this habit early on, if you're already doing this. It will give you personal satisfaction as well as help others. Lastly, what does success mean to you? You need to define this in order to strive to achieve success. There are no wrong answers. Right answers are based on your own context. For some, it would be wealth, especially if you don't have any currently. For some, it would be creating a cool product. For some, it would be becoming the best teacher. To us at Infosys, success was about success of our stakeholders. We wanted our customers to succeed in their business using Infosys. We wanted our employees to achieve their life goals working for Infosys. We wanted our shareholders to get the best returns for their investment in Infosys. We wanted to be good corporate citizens and be a desirable company in society. And for us individually, if Infosys was successful, we knew we would be successful. That is how we defined our success. And I request each one of you to think about this and define your success as you step out into the next phase of your life. So as you step into the next phase of your life, when you're expected to take on even bigger responsibilities in building a business, in being a professional, in being a father or mother, I thought I would share these learnings that I've had. As I said, some of these are not explicitly taught. But for learning to be internalized, you need to explicitly internalize these things. And of course, these combined with the formal education that you have had will make you a better person and more successful, I believe. I wish you all the very best. I'm very confident in saying that India is in good hands when I see all of you. So thank you for learning, listening to me patiently. I wish you, I wish you all the very best. Thank you. All are requested to rise for national anthem. Chala chala di taranga, 
तव शुभ नामे जावे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाता जन जन मंगल धायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे I declare this convocation closed. All are requested to remain standing at their place till the academic procession and the student procession leave the hall. All the graduating students are requested to assemble in the adjacent auditorium uh, where we'll have a group photograph. So first we'll have the UG group photograph and then the PG. So all the PG students are requested for, to wait for 10 minutes until the UG photograph takes place. Then we'll proceed for the lunch. Thank you so much everyone.